Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Lori and today I am going to review my updated fountain pen collection. It's been six months since I released a fountain pen collection video and it's been about a year since I have become obsessed with fountain pens. I'm loving the hobby. It brings me joy every day to write with these fine writing instruments and I just wanted to give you an updated collection. So I think what we're going to do today is I'm going to go by brand and kind of show you all the pens that I have within a brand family and then we'll go from there. Be sure to stay till the end because I want to talk about a few pens that are on my wish list and as we go through my collection I'm also going to share with you pens that I plan on letting go of either giving to people, gifting or selling because if you've been at this hobby for any length of time you know how quickly these pens can add up and they can get very pricey. I think it's important to use the pens that you love and then the ones that I'm not using I can give a new home. If you enjoy content about fountain pens, inks, stationery, hobonichi, planning, all the good stuff, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss an upload and like this video if you have a good time. I want to start with collections that I have a lot of so I don't forget anything and right out of the gate I think of Esterbrook. Esterbrook is one of my very favorite pen brands and I have been slowly building my collection through the year. The very first Esterbrook that I bought wasn't that long ago and then once I had a taste of Esterbrook I just ran with it. But I bought the Botanical Garden in a medium nib at the Fountain Pen Hospital in New York City and I just fell in love with this brand. I fell in love with the Esty. It's been a lot of fun ever since. So this is the Botanical Garden. I chose this one first because it had so many colors and I love kind of the jewel tones in here. There's some flecks of like gold, like a mustard color, and then some beautiful greens and teals and even reds. I thought that this would be a great pen to showcase so many different inks that I have. So I went with the Botanical Garden. I also got the Oktoberfest pen that same day because they were having a really good deal on it. This was a little bit of an impulse buy, but of course I'm very excited now in the month of October that I have this this month. This is inked up in my currently inked collection for the month of October. This is a Camden. It has a flat top as opposed to the SD, which has like the traditional cigar shaped top. This is the only Camden I have. I have mostly SDs because they are my favorite. Next up for Estes, and I realize that I have a lot in this color family. What I'm realizing about myself is I really favor the fall tones. This is my newest SD. I started with my first SD. This is my newest one that I'm saving for November. I'm gonna ink this up for the month of Thanksgiving. This is the Honeycomb SD, and I purchased this at a local pop-up show that was in Monson, Massachusetts. The Commonwealth Pen Show, which is held in, the, in Massachusetts every year was canceled. So the pop-up in Munson happened as a result of that one being canceled. Some of the vendors got together, so we took a ride out there and I picked this up. It was pre-owned. I purchased this because it was also sold with the converter that you can put on these pens and then have some of the Esterbrook vintage nibs on a modern pen, which I think is so cool. It's one of the things I love about Esterbrook is that you can swap the nibs. Now that I've dug into the hobby and I'm feeling more comfortable like tinkering with my pens, I've been swapping nibs and having a really good time. So this was sold with a medium nib, I believe, but I also got, this is what the little converter looks like. And then I picked up two vintage nibs at this pen show from two different vendors. This is the 2550. It is the firm extra fine. I have no idea why I grabbed an extra fine. I think I grabbed this by accident because I usually like a little bit more of an ink flow. Um, but the first one that I got was like a rigid medium and it's fantastic. I put that on my vintage Esterbrook. So the price that this was offered at was just too good to not take home with me. So this is my most current SD and the only SD that I have never inked up. Um, so the SD that I held up with that, kind of in the same color family, this is one of my very favorites. This is the Rocky Top SD, and this has the diamond casting in it, which I don't even know if you can appreciate it on camera, but it has this these flecks of diamond dust, and it's just absolutely beautiful. 
I bought this at a store in Cambridge called Bob Slates and I had been eyeing this for a while but for the longest time they were only offering it in the oversized and it was a little bit more expensive than what I wanted to pay but these are kind of hard to come by and they can be very expensive on the secondhand market because this is not in production anymore and then one time I was in Cambridge Cambridge went into Bob Slates and the owner, I didn't know until I checked out, she's like, oh my gosh, I found a couple of those Rocky Tops. I was able to get the SD in the standard size, which I prefer, and I got it in a medium nib. So I was so excited and it was discounted. I was able to choose from a couple and I picked this one because it had a lot of white swirls. I like seeing the contrast in the swirls. I just think this is beautiful. I can't talk this much about each pen or we'll be here all day. This is an SD that I picked up secondhand. Um, I got a great deal. This is the Lilac, also one that they don't make anymore. It came with an extra fine nib and it wasn't the best writer. So when I went to the Orlando Pen Show, I had Kirk Spear, who is a nibmeister um, from Pen Realm. He worked on this and he did the Waverly nib, which is a really cool grind that ticks up a little bit, almost like a fude. I don't know if you can see it here but it is such a beautiful writer now i love that it was it's a unique grind and kirk worked on three of my pens i honestly wish i had him work on 10 of them because he did such great work so i love that now that was one that i didn't reach for for very much this is an oversized sd the only oversized one that i own and this is in the pattern candy which i really love this is brighter and has cooler colors than i usually choose i'm usually in those earth tones but i really loved this candy one i was shopping at apple boom in boston it was my first visit there my husband had bought me a couple pens from there because he works in Boston, but I had never been into the store. So we were there, it was a week after Mother's Day and Jay ended up getting me this for Mother's Day. I actually walked out of the store and didn't get anything and he said, go back and get that Estherbrook. He said, I really like that one. So Jay kind of helped me pick this one out. It's in a fine nib, but it's actually a really wet writer and it's really beautiful and it's my only oversized SD. So I kind of have a thing for Estherbrook and I continue to buy the SDs. I have to slow down a little bit because I have a lot of different ones. Oh, I also have the Estherbrook collab with Ferris Wheel Press, and that is one of the pens that I'm thinking about selling. I love it so much, but it was a bit of an impulse buy, and it's really, really bright. It has all of the colors of the rainbow. It also has that diamond casting, like little flecks of gold. It's absolutely beautiful, but it was the most expensive SD. Um, I bought it at the release. I couldn't wait, and a lot of the ones that I had seen online, I saw a lot of the purples and the blues. The one that I received, because you never know what the pattern's actually gonna look like until you get it, I got a lot of like reds and oranges and it just it's a little too bright for me and it's a limited edition so I inked it up I got a broad nib it's one of the best writers that I have I mean I wrote with it and I was like oh my gosh I inked it up once with the ink that came with it it's a beautiful beautiful pen very special first time collaboration I just don't know if it's going to be in my forever collection so I actually put that back in the box I cleaned it out and I'm just I'm just waiting for the right moment. I'm not ready to sell it yet, but that is the last of the Estes that I own, and I love my Estherbrook collection. I was doing a final run through of this video and realized I did not talk about my SD Nouveau Blue, which I just picked up at the Orlando Pen Show. I had taken a wax seal class with Vanessa Langton, and we were given a wax sealer from Estherbrook. It was sponsored by Estherbrook and it was in this pattern. Being me, I needed the pen that matched it and I absolutely love it. They gave me a really great deal with this because I wanted the journaler's nib and they didn't have any in stock. So they gave it to me with a medium nib and sent me the journaler's nib. And I also got a free little uh, brass nib shaped bookmark as well. It was quite a deal. So I have an extra medium nib that I can play around with and I love the colors in this so much. And the class was so much fun. One other Estherbrook that I do have is the Estherbrook J. And the story behind how I acquired this pen is quite funny. My full-time job is a reseller and I have a YouTube channel called Lori's Boston Found. This, that's where I started on YouTube and this was kind of a spin-off channel that has now become about fountain pens and stationery and such. 
So I was on Poshmark and I was looking at fountain pens and I accidentally purchased this. Sometimes you're just pressing buttons. I think I liked it and somehow I bought it. It's <laughs> It was, it was one of those weird scenarios. It was a little more than I wanted to spend. Typically, I would send an offer, maybe for 20% off the list price or whatever, but I bought it. No sooner did I buy it did I get a message from the woman I bought it from who said, oh my goodness, Lori, thank you so much. I watch your YouTube channel. Thank you so much for supporting my business. And my husband and I were like, well, I can't not take it now. I was happy because I was obviously looking at this pen, but I didn't actually plan on buying it. It's in absolutely beautiful condition. It does have like the little bladder, which homes the, um, the ink in here. So this is a system that I was unfamiliar with. This was the first vintage pen that I bought. This is in beautiful condition, but I didn't love the nib on it. When I went to the Monson Pen Show, I ended up getting a new old stock Esterbrook nib. That was like the medium firm that I put on here. And oh my goodness, this writes like an absolute dream now. I love it so much. I think I need to put a little talc powder on here to get this back in. There we go, there we go. I'm just getting ink all over my hands. Okay, I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay, I think I'm in trouble. I'm not even out of my Esterbrooks and I have ink all over my hands. All right, that's all for my Esterbrooks. Okay, next let's look at my Sailor pens. Now Sailor is the company that I got my very first gold nib from. I bought it on Amazon. I think it's called like Autumn Moon. Uh, it's in the Shikiori series, and I think that many people may start off with this series, maybe even from Amazon for their first 14 karat gold nib. Let me know in the comments what your first 14 karat gold nib was, if you have them. Sailor's nibs give you a lot of feedback. They're supposed to kind of feel like a very sharp um, pencil. Like that's kind of the sound and the feeling you get with the feedback, not to be confused with a scratchy nib. And when I first got this, I really didn't like it. So in my first review, I don't know if I was getting along with this pen when I first talked about this because I was so hyped up for my very first Sailor, my very first 14 karat gold nib. They come in mostly medium fine nibs, which is finer than European nibs. And I put an ink that I absolutely love by Ferris Wheel Press called Stroke of Midnight. I put that in here, but it's a shimmer ink. It was not a good match. It's a dry ink with shimmer in a Sailor medium fine nib. I was very new, it just wasn't a good combo. I have found beautiful inks to go in here since then. Right now I have steeped umber in here and it's looking really nice. Also from Ferris Wheel Press, also a little bit dry but no shimmer in it and it's, it's a nice compliment to this pen. So this was my very first Sailor pen. Then my husband went to Japan, you may have seen that haul. He went to Japan separately last December and got me a bunch of pens and then I just went on a trip and that's why I keep adding so many to my collection. But when Jay went away, he came home with the Christmas pudding pen. This was released last year. I love, love, love the red and the finial here. And I also love the two different colors. I love that the section is that caramel color. This was a little bit like of a last minute add-on. It was just so much more affordable in Japan. So we kind of went for some of the pens that I probably would have waited longer to get. I wasn't anticipating that I was gonna go back to Japan in less than a year. I had never been to Japan. I didn't ink it up for very long, but now as we're coming into the season, it's gonna be so much fun. I love the little green sparkle and the cap. Love this, it writes beautiful. I will tell you my two favorite writers within the Sailor family, but this was the other pen that Jay got for me. This is the fifth year anniversary Shikiori and it's in this the 1911 size. This pen was supposed to be symbolic of a grain of rice and each color in the pen told a story of the process of growing rice and it's really pretty. It came with a gorgeous ink that goes down kind of like a olivey brown green and then it dries brown. Um, I have it in a different pen right now, but I love the ink that this came with. This was also at the time when Jay went away, sold out in a lot of places in the States. These two pens were pretty hot last fall and winter and Jay got such a great deal on them. Also last year, I ended up getting this Winter Rain pen, which is one of my best Sailor writers. This has a 21 karat gold nib. I got this either at Endless Pens or Cult Pens on like National Fountain Pen Day or Black Friday. It was a really, really good deal. I had no idea why it was so expensive. Again, I was a little bit new, but I knew I liked the look of this. It's kind of like that milky color. I loved the color of it. And I got a really good deal. 
um, because of the discount for the special. And then it came in and I realized it was 21 karat or one of my viewers said, that's more expensive because it's a 21 karat gold nib. Wow, what a difference. Absolutely stunner of a writer, one of my favorite writers. My only complaint about this is that it, the post doesn't stay on very well. I don't post all of my pens. I used to be kind of adamant about wanting to post my pens, but my Pro Gear Slims are on the smaller side, so I do like to post these pens, and this kind of pops off. That's the one downside to this, but as far as a writer goes, absolutely gorgeous. Okay, this I ended up getting in a bundle that I also got with a Banu pen, a Vodka on the Rocks. It had this really beautiful pen with the full bottle of ink that went with this. And I think this was even in the box. She sent everything. Plus she sent me a full bottle of Earl Grey to go with the vodka on the rocks, a bunch of sample inks, and I got a Twisby. The Sakura ink is way too light. It's a beautiful color, but I like to put blue ink in here. I think I have a Pilot ink in here right now. That's really beautiful. Um, so I got that second hand. Then I have two sailor pens from Yoseka. I have the Refresh and I have the Home. Um, I bought the Refresh in store. It's this really light blue with like a corally pink finial, so beautiful. I got this in a broad nib. You can't always get Pro Gear Slims in anything other than a medium fine, but they had it in a variety of nib sizes, so I went for the broad. This is a beautiful writer. This is definitely my favorite of the moment right now. Look at how obnoxious that is. I should stop talking with my hands. I'm Italian, that's nearly impossible. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk this way so I'm not like distracting you with the ink on my hand. This is the home pen from Yoseka, designed by their beautiful employee, Ashley. She did such a great job designing this pen. This was a pre-order. There are four different colors. You have the clear cap. The finial is like this beautiful olive color. I don't know if you can see that. And then this is like the Christmas pudding. It's kind of like this little caramel color. And then I would say that the, the body of it is like a vanilla color. So beautiful. When Yoseka got these back from Sailor, they had sent the wrong finish for the gold. It was supposed to be like more of a yellow gold. I really liked this paler gold color. I don't know if you can see the difference. So I chose to keep mine. This also is a 21 karat gold nib. It was supposed to be a bi-colored nib, which I would have really enjoyed. Um, but this first wave came with a solid gold color nib. I opted to keep this. Noseka gave us a 10% credit back for the inconvenience. And then some people wanted to go with the original so they could send this back and then get the original design by Ashley. This was just such an incredible writer. I didn't want a chance getting a second one. Um, so I took the, the refund and kept this one. I think it's kind of special that I got the one that wasn't meant to be. I love this pen so much. It's a beautiful writer. And my last sailor pen when I was just in Japan, I got this little sailor mini. This is an older series, so this was deeply discounted. I wanna say this was like over 50% off, and it's a cute little pocket pen. I love that the section is black on this, and it's this nice taupey grayish brown. I just love this color. I didn't have a pocket pen, and the price was right. I was really tempted to get a second one. They had another one that was like a caramel color, but I have so many sailors, so I'm good on sailor pens for now. I went through a period where I wanted to try out the Jinhao pens. I have a couple Jinhao X159s, which is the knockoff to Mont Blanc. I had so much fun with those. Um, I gifted one already. I have another one that I plan on gifting to a friend whose birthday is this week. I'm going to send that one to her. And then I kept two of them. So I kept the cream colored one this is really nice, and I think I have Diamine Pick Me Up in here right now, which is a great ink, and then I have this darker green. These are super inexpensive. I was on the fence about a Mont Blanc 149, which I did end up pulling the trigger on, but these are incredibly, incredibly affordable, and I wanted to give them a try. Those are my Jin Hao 159s, and then I got some Jin Hao 82s to compare to the Sailor Pro Gear Slim, which I also did a video on comparing the two. So honestly, if you're looking to spend under $10, sometimes under $5 for a pen, I think the Jin Hao's are fantastic. It's a little hard to compare to an actual Sailor nib that's 21 karat gold or 14 karat gold. For the price, 
I think these are a tremendous, tremendous value. If you're just getting started or if you want to keep one ink in a pen that might make a mess of some of your higher end pens, like maybe some shimmer inks or things like that, or if you want to have fun with it, you can swap these off. Like I could put one cap on a different pen and mix things up to get a different look. So I think you can really have fun with Jin Hao pens and they're not bad pens. I would say that I prefer the one, the X159 to the 82, just cause it's a little more girthier. And now I've seen more availability in like medium nibs. I don't know that I've ever seen broad nibs, but all of mine came fine or extra fine. So I would have liked a little more selection with my nibs. I will probably continue to have fun with Jin Hao's, but then I probably won't keep them in my collection forever. I've already slated these two Jin Hao's to gift or I, I probably wouldn't sell them because they're not worth a lot of money, but I will gift them. And I gifted the light blue one to a friend. It's a nice way to get people into the hobby, um, but I did keep the pink because I love pink pens and I just wanted to keep one. Let's go to Italy and see what I have for Italian pens. My husband bought me my first Leonardo pen for Valentine's Day from Apple Boom. He picked it out all on his own. This is the Leonardo Fiore Grande in Blue Hawaii with a steel fine nib. I was a little confused when I first got this because there were some Leonardo, Leonardo Fiores that had the blind cap that you could screw off and I, I think I loosened this because I kept trying to take it off and this was a piston fill and it didn't have the blind cap um, and it actually didn't come with any of its paperwork which we ended up getting. They put it in a box, it didn't have a booklet this was a one-time thing that happened to me at Apple Boom. I was a little disappointed, but they totally made good on it. They gave us all the paperwork. They actually honored their online price. They gave us a credit. They gave Jay a bottle of ink. I mean, they were fantastic when he went back, but I did end up loosening this a little bit in um, trying to get it off, thinking it was a blind cap, but it's a little bit on me. I should have done a little bit more homework, but I absolutely love my Leonardo pens, and I think that these pens, you get so much bang for your buck. And I loved this one so much that I said to my husband, if you're ever in the market again, I really love the sand. I love how it looks like there are facets and stripes on this pen, but it's actually smooth. So it's super polished. Our anniversary, he ordered this from Gold Spot Pens, I believe, and he got the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande in sand. And this time, which I totally did not expect. He splurged and he got the 14 karat gold nib, which I don't, I don't know that I would have splurged on that for myself, but I'm certainly happy that I have a Leonardo with a 14 karat gold nib. This is absolutely beautiful. So I have the Fiore with a steel nib and a fine, the Memento Zero Grande with a 14 karat gold nib in a medium. I love, I prefer the way this one writes. And I don't know if it's because I like the medium nib better than the fine, or if it's because it's a 14 karat gold nib or both, but I love both of my Leonardo's and I have one more. This one I picked up at Gold Spot Pens. These were selling out fast. This is the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande in the primary manipulation from Jonathan Brooks PM1. Um, and I always wanted to try this out. And then they came out with this with a matte finish and I was intrigued by the matte finish. I wasn't sure that I loved this pen when I first got it. I love how it looks on the back side, but then on this side, I felt, where was the front? I felt like this was a little muddy looking. Like I like to see the swirls. It almost looked like two different pens. Then I thought to myself, I don't post them. And when I looked at this on its own, which is how I would be writing with it, I actually really loved this. This was a good price. I was also able to use a 10% coupon at Gold Spot. Plus this has an ink window. There was only one left, so I ended up getting it in a stub nib, which I'm so excited about. I probably wouldn't have chosen a stub nib, but I've had so much fun with this. This is another one that has so many colors, so many options for inks. And right now I have Ferris wheel press blushing mushroom in this pen. And oh my goodness, I have that ink in one other pen and both of the pens that that ink is in is just so beautiful. So one of the things is when I do buy, 
one of the things I try to keep in mind when I'm purchasing multiples from one brand, and it doesn't always work out, but I like to try different nibs. If I'm going to have multiple Leonardo's, I want to try the steel nib, I want to try the 14 karat gold nib, I want to try broad or fine, medium stuff. So as I get deeper into my collection, if I am fond of a brand, which clearly I get attached to certain brands, I will try to get different nibs. My husband's mowing the lawn and my dog is very excited about it. Hold on. Okay, so let's move on from Leonardo's. I'm gonna talk really quickly about the two pens that I got at the Orlando Pen Show from Small Pen Makers. Um, I got this pen. This caught my eye because I was just talking about blushing mushroom. And this is from Taylor Pen Company. This is the Asher, I believe, in Tiffany is the material. I was just obsessed with this. I love faceted pens, and faceted is just like several sides because as you turn it, you can see how the light reflects off of each of the facets. I just love that about a pen. This was one of the last pens I bought at the show, and I walked by the table a hundred times and finally went back and got it. I also really love how this is flush. This is just really beautiful. Love my Taylor pen. Okay, now we're competing with the lawnmower and the dog. This is him looking at his dad out the window. Super excited. I gave him a greenie. I'm hoping that will calm him down. I love the way this writes. I believe I got this in in a broad nib. Um, it's really beautiful. It can get a little sharp over here when I'm holding it, um, depending on where I'm holding it. I tend to have like a death grip on my pens, and that is something I'm really working on because one of the beauties of fountain pens is that you don't have to put any pressure on, and I'm so used to just holding my pen so tight, I'm constantly reminding myself to just like loosen up and just write because it just works much better that way. The other pen that I got was from Zodiac Pens from my friend Bart, who is such a sweetheart. And one of the things I love about buying pens from these small makers is you just get to know the people behind the pen. And I think it's a rare opportunity when you go to pen shows to meet people who are designing these pens. This was made exclusively for the Orlando Pen Show. This is his Pisces pen and it's kind of shaped like a fish. It's got like a wider center and then it tapers and goes out. I love these like hourglass shaped pens. Sometimes in this case it gets a little wider in the middle. I have another pen that kind of gets thinner in the middle. I just think they're great. I love his finials like Zodiac pen and it says Orlando 2023 here. And I believe this is just with a, a number six Yovo nib, which is on quite a few of my pens. It's fantastic. I think I got this in a broad nib too. I love all the swirls of like navy and uh, this dark pearl color. And there's even little flecks of gold. This reminds me of like a stormy night. I think it's so beautiful. I'm super excited that I had the opportunity to go to a pen show and meet the people who make these beautiful pens. It definitely adds another level of connection to the people, to the company, to the pens. I can't say enough about Taylor Company and Zodiac pens. Definitely check them out. Since I was just talking about Italian pens, I wanna talk about my Scribo feel. I absolutely love this pen. This is one of my favorite pens. I really love the color of this. This is another pen that has this interesting shape that tapers in the center. Um, this is a fine flex 14 karat gold nib. It was all that was available when I purchased this. I think I got this at Van S. I will put the name of this design. I think it's like Madalena. It starts with an M. One of the managers of Omas started Scribo. There is so much quality and love that is put into these pens and to the design of these pens. What I love about this is that it is a fine flex nib, so I don't have to put a lot of pressure on and the ink flow is tremendous and it writes with a fine nib. I find that I do have to press down a bit to get it to flex, but it flexes really nice. I'm very new to flex pens, so I just want to make sure I don't push down too hard. So I'm still getting to know this nib. I would like to get another Scribo with just like a medium nib or maybe uh, an italic or something like that, but I love this pen. I would say this is like top three pens right now. And I just love this company. I love the shape of this. I love the facets. They only make three pens. One of them is similar in shape, but it doesn't have the facets. It's less money, but you know, I just, I just love the way this looks. I think the next one that I get 
will probably have a pattern on it just to be fun. Okay, well I can't talk about Italian pens without talking about my Visconti pens. I have shared the story about my Visconti Homo Sapiens Lava Pen. I think this is the Blizzard model. We lost my dad to lung cancer in March and I wanted to get a pen that kind of honored my dad and I looked up what color is the ribbon for lung cancer and it was white. My family is Italian on my dad's side, French on my mom's side. So my dad and I were both born in July. He was 4th of July, I'm July 9th. So we're both cancers, that's our zodiac sign. You could actually swap out the finial through Visconti. So I just was able to really personalize this and the, the lava pens are virtually indestructible. That's what they're known for. And I just thought of our family spirit and all that stuff. I got this while my dad was still fighting. Um, so anyways, this is a very special pen to me. Uh, it's a heavy pen. I have it inked up for October. I've been loving it. I will say that I think I probably could use a little nib love on this. Like I might bring this to my next pen show. I think it just needs to be tuned a little bit. Something about being on the diagonal that it doesn't always, it skips a little bit, but when it's in the zone, the flow of the ink is unbelievable. I got a medium nib and it's just beautiful. I think it's 18 karat gold. So I love this pen, very special to me. This is the Visconti Venus, which I never hear anybody talking about. I got this on some random website. It kind of reminds me of the Rembrandt. It wrote terrible. I ordered a fine, not knowing what I liked at the time. I could have bought a medium. I probably would have preferred a medium. The nib never worked for me very well. Another very disappointing one. And this this I purchased shortly after I bought my sailor. So I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not doing well. Being at a pen show or going into a pen shop, you can really test pens. I only had YouTube to educate me on what I thought I might like or not like. Now that I know myself a little bit better and I know my preferences, I can filter through some YouTube videos and try to figure out like what I might like based on reviews. But it's still, until you actually hold a pen and write with it, it's hard to know. I love this pen. I love holding it. It's a great size. I can also post this pen. It's a steel nib. It has a metal section, which I typically do not prefer, but this one really is nice and I brought it to the Orlando Pen Show. Now, oh my gosh, there's just something so special about this pen. I had dropped it at one point and this back piece fell off and the body cracked. I was ready to throw this in the trash. I found the piece on the bottom. I pushed it back together. You cannot even see where it's cracked and then Kirk Spear got it. And now I just feel like this little pen has been through so much and it writes like a dream. One of like my favorite writers now. It went from like one of my least to one of my best. Here, by the way, this is what I store my pens in. I have lots of like little cases, but this is my main case. And I got this on Muji.com. And then the little pen slips that are inside are from Pen Industries and you actually cut them down yourself. And I saw many people on YouTube who use this system. So I have that just recently. I ordered this online on Amazon. I just love trays that come out and I don't always love like the heavy elastics that go across my pens and this holds 12 so I can just kind of carry this around. I kind of wish I had gotten the matte and not the shiny but this is such great quality and the price is right. I can leave the link to my Amazon store in the description and yeah I love that these slide out. So those are my main cases. Other than that, I usually have soft cases that I kind of carry with me when I travel. Two of the nicest pens I have that I don't use very often and I don't know why. These I definitely have to get back into the rotation are my platinum pens. I have two platinum 3776 pens. This is the one that I really love because it's got a medium nib. Jay got these both for me last year in Japan. This is the Shape of Heart which has the Swarovski crystals in the finial. The little hole is in the shape of a heart. So they take that little punch of the 14 karat gold and they put two of them in the finial. Um, and it's it's a nice little thing. So I wanted to wait until Valentine's Day for this, but I think I made it to New Year's before I busted open this one. But I love it so much. I do love this. This is a fine nib. I don't have any reason why I haven't inked these up more often. Um, I had this inked with Dusted Truffle for a while, which I absolutely loved. I think I might put some black ink in both of these. Um, I did have the carbon ink in this, and I 
in my head when I first got these pens, I thought this would be one that I write like in my Hobonichi, in my weeks, because the space is smaller and the nib is finer, and then I will use this on um, other other types of paper. The truth is they're both phenomenal pens and they need to be used more often. They both write fantastic. I just haven't reached for them. I have one Pelican and it was given to me by a lovely friend in Orlando who watched my channel. Her name is Olga and she had the most beautiful Pelican collection with her at the show and she happened to have two of the Golden Barrel she totally surprised me. We we're having a conversation. I turned to say something to somebody else. I turned around and she's like, I want you to have this. I didn't even know what to say. I couldn't believe it. It was such a beautiful gesture. Some people's kindness just blows me away. And Olga is just one of those people. This is my one and only Pelican. And it's really beautiful. I actually have gentle gu guitar, gentle green in here, which I think I want to, it's, I love this ink, but I think I want to put like a golden color in here. And I know they had like a certain color that went with this, but my only Pelican writes like a dream. It's a broad nib. It was a gift. It will remain in my collection forever. And it was so, so special. So thank you again, Olga. Um, all right, let's talk about Banu. Since we were just chatting about Banu, I have four Banu pens. The very first Banu pen that I bought, I got at Goulet Pens, and I say all the time that this was the first pen I looked at and said, I have to have that pen. It was like the first time I had that feeling like there's no way I'm not getting that the day it is released. And that was the Iced Caramel Latte Banu exclusive to Goulet Pens. I got it with a fine nib again early in my journey. Um, I probably would get this with a broader nib or medium. I also, I say this a lot, I like extra fine nibs. I just like my extra fine on like pilots and sailor pens. If I'm gonna have like real blingy pens like this, I like to use my shimmer inks with these types of pens. Not that you can't use shimmer inks with fine pens because you absolutely can. Coco Shimmer looks really nice in here as does um, Diamine Yule Brown, Yule Log. This is just great. I love this pen so much, very special to me. Then, as I mentioned earlier with the Sailor Pen, this is the Euphoria Vodka on the Rocks that I got in that bundle. I love this because it's so blingy, yet you can put any color in here. Um, the person who sold this to me used Earl Grey, which is a little kind of toned down for this, but it really worked. Um, but I love this Vodka on the Rocks, and I believe this is a broad nib. So this is a really fun writer. I, I bought every other Banu pre-owned. Um, I got this Benu um, Euphoria again. I'd love to try the Talisman. I don't have a Talisman, but this is bourbon. And oh my gosh, I have J. Urban. I'm going to mispronounce it, but it's like Corneille de Egypt. I don't know. Someone correct me. <laughs> this is like one of my favorite combos right now. And this is also inked up for the month of October. So really having fun with that. And then I have this little baby Briolette in this like blue ice, which is really cool. I wanted to try the Briolette. This pen does not post. I think it's really cool. This is a great writer. It's got like a black section. There's a color called Arctic Blast that was in the Diamine Ink calendar. I think I want to try that this winter in this pen. And I got a really great deal on this. It also came with the little, kind of like the little Glacier pen holder that I'm actually selling because I don't use that. But this was another great deal. It writes like a dream. A lot of these pens that I have bought secondhand have been like inked once or twice. People think they're gonna get into the collection. They buy a few pens and then they either get out of the collection or they their taste changes or they wanna get a more expensive pen. So you swap out a few, you sell a couple to upgrade. There are a lot of pens on the secondhand market that I'm always scouring, but you also never know if there's ever been any damage to the nib. You don't have that guarantee once you buy it. So you do have to be a little bit careful. I did do a video, I bought a a Boheme um, Mont Blanc that was fake on Mercari. And I ended up getting my money back, but it was very hard for me to identify. Well, one, in hindsight, it was easy to see why it was fake, but I wasn't really familiar with Mont Blanc. I only had one other pen from Mont Blanc. So you have to be really careful, especially if you're buying something like a Mont Blanc online. Definitely get it from a reputable place. I don't think people are faking Banu pens. You know what I mean? So just be careful what you buy secondhand, but you can really find some great deals. Those are my Banus. Um, I'm gonna talk quickly about Twisby and I'm missing my favorite Twisby. I lost 
My very first Twisby, it was one of the first pens I bought. It was the Rose Gold White Eco, and I loved it. I have since bought a few other ones, and none of them I like as much as that first one. I might get the Smoke, because I feel like that white one's gonna turn up somehow. I ended up getting the Diamond 580 just in the clear with a stub nib when I was at the Fountain Pen Hospital, and this has um, Central Park Green in it, which was from Ferris Wheel Press. It was New York themed color and I thought it was really great in here. So I love the Diamond 580. I love the stub nib. This is really fun, great ink capacity. I love to see the ink swish back and forth. This is the Glow one. This is one of the pens I plan to sell because I think this has an extra fine nib and it's just never been a great performer for me. I think I have um, the Apple Martini color from last year's Diamine calendar, ink vent calendar in here, so it's a great combo. I should give this another try, but I haven't had the best luck with this extra fine nib. And this was another one that came with the Vodka on the Rocks and the Sakura Sailor Pen. I think this one has a medium nib, so this one's pretty good. I just haven't like loved, loved any of my Twisbees, except for my rose gold one in white. I don't know. Um, I love the stub nib. This one's really fun. These are just okay. Two of my Twisbees were pre-owned, so maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe something happened to these. So anyway, this is a pen that is probably the nicest pen that I never used. This is the Diplomat Arrow. It's such a beautiful pen. It's in the color I want. It's a medium nib. It's a gold nib. It is such a beautiful writer. The problem is I have pretty dry hands and this just slips around. I don't know what it is about this section, but it slips. I just don't enjoy the experience. Some people have sweaty hands and this would be fantastic for them. And also like my Visconti has a metal section, doesn't bother me at all. This slips around and it's too nice of a pen to know that I'm never going to reach for it. So this is one that I will be selling. I've only probably inked it once or twice. The Diplomat Arrow is a really nice pen, really nice. This is another pen that I have a single of, and this is a Le Bon Snow 325. I actually bought this the day that my dad died. It was right before midnight, and I'm like, I'm really sad. I wanna buy a pen to make myself feel better, and I was looking at this Le Bon. I bought it, and when I checked out, I realized that it was called Snow. The day before my dad died, we got 22 inches of snow in my parents' hometown. All of the friends and neighbors who were coming to visit to say goodbye to my dad and whatnot had to get through the snow. We had neighbors shoveling for us. We had a plow come. It was, it was surreal how many people were involved in that day. And I wasn't even thinking of it when I bought this pen. Um, and then I'm like, oh my gosh, this is snow. And snow is like a big part of you know, our last days with my dad, just the whole village coming together to make sure that he was comfortable and that we as a family had everything we needed. This one's really special, I love it. Okay, battery break and lumpy break. This is the young man who got into my Lamy's. So we're gonna keep him far from us while we discuss Lamy. I got this Lamy Safari when I was out in Japan. This is a collaboration with Itoya. It's this beautiful taupey color with a copper clip. Love this pen. It's a medium nib, one of my favorites. I have two Lamy's that I really love. And if you watch my most recent video, Lumpy got into my pens and he chewed my Lamy Joy. And there's more to that story. This is the other Lamy Safari that I love. This is Terracotta. Both of these have the black coating on the nib which for whatever reason, I discussed this in my video where Lumpy ate my pen. I really prefer these coated nibs. I've just had really good luck with them. And these are definitely my two favorite Lamy pens. The one that I perform performed surgery on was this cream pen. I took the stub calligraphy nib from my Lamy Joy and I put it on here because this had a steel nib that was super scratchy and I just never used it. After that video posted, I was super excited about this and look who got a hold of this. Do you see the bite marks on this? I don't know what he's attracted to with Lamy's. I have that brown case that I just showed you. I like keep my pens under lock and key. I've transformed my oldest son's room to like my office space or my journaling room. I close the door 
So since the episode, he does not have access to my pens, but he always goes for the Lamy. So I'm not gonna throw this out, but this now has lumpy teeth marks in it. He's so fresh. I also have the Lamy 2000, which is another pen I do not reach for very often because I reach for my vanishing point all the time. I feel like these two get compared a lot, although they're very different, but I think they're workhorse, reliable pens from their respective brands. Um, I think what I need to do with this one is put a black ink in here. I keep trying to throw different colored inks in. I have plenty of other pens that have a multitude of colors. I think I just need to stick to the basics with this, which is what I've done with my Vanishing Point. I only have black ink in there and I use it every single day in my Hobonichi planners. I think this is just more of like a business pen. I think I just need to put black ink in here because it is a great writer. It does have a 14 karat gold nib. This design is so unique. It's got this little section right here, which is a small ink window. Sorry about the lawnmower. The man who helped me at, at the Fountain Pen Hospital talked me into this. He said, it's my favorite pen to sell and he sold me on it. So I'm happy I have that memory because he was a sweetheart. So those are all of my Lamy's. I'm gonna talk quickly about my Mont Blancs. I did a video on the Greta Garbo pen that I got from Mont Blanc secondhand. I got a tremendous deal on it, relatively speaking. After having it for a couple of months, I decided I was going to let it go because the resale value is so good on that pen and it was a little bit small for me. I loved everything about it. I love the finial. It's like got the big Mont Blanc snowflake on it the flat top it's got the little pearl it was the first in the muses series there's also like one of Marilyn Monroe Elizabeth Taylor and I think there's a new one that's out right now I did decide that I wanted to get the 149 so I decided I was going to let go of my Mont Blanc Greta Garbo pen which I didn't think I would ever do this I purchased secondhand this is the noblesse this is a vintage Mont Blanc beautiful writer with a nice little gold nib this is a much more feminine, delicate, narrow pen, really beautiful. What I love about some of my more narrow pens is that they fit into my planners when I'm on the go. This is my Louis Vuitton um, planner and it's it's got this little pen holder right here and this fits right inside and this is this is a pairing that I really love. My Louis Vuitton with my classic Noblesse Mont Blanc. I believe this is from the 80s. That's the little finial. But my latest and greatest and one of my very favorite pens that I didn't know I even wanted, well, I kind of knew. I really thought when I bought the X159s that that was gonna be enough for me. If you look at them all side by side, once again, you can see why the X159s are a great option if you want to save a boatload of money and get a very similar experience. As far as the size and the girth, the specs are so similar. You are not dealing with the same nib or the filling mechanism. Like this piston fill is so nice. Those are cartridge fills. Um, I got an extra fine nib when I was in Orlando. I talked all about this pen and showed um, the guy, Sid, who worked on this pen. He is a medical student. He specializes in restoring Mont Blanc 149s and it was fascinating to watch him work. He had one of these actually filled with Mont Blancs and I tried a bunch and I ended up really loving an extra fine, which I can't believe. The one that I settled on was a bi-colored nib. Sid put this probably early 1990s, between like 1990, 1992. It has a split ebonite feed in the back, which I was really excited about. I was looking at another one. It was more modern from like early 2000s and it had a plastic feed. It's got the little ink window in there and I had like a deep turquoise in there and I just inked it up with tea time for the month of October. It's like a rusty color and it's so beautiful. I am having so much fun with this pen. I'm so happy that I have it. It is just a very special classic pen. I was going between the 149 and the 146, but I knew that I liked larger pens like my Leonardo's and my Scribo. And then when I wrote with this down in Florida, it was my first pen show. I felt very confident buying it from Sid. He walked me through everything and I'm so, so happy that I have it. It's another reason why I'm letting go of the other Mont Blanc because I really prefer this one, the writing experience with this one. I am running short on time here. It's my mom's birthday. Happy birthday, mom. And I am heading out to pick up my aunt to bring her to my mom's. So I am gonna go very quickly through the rest. 
Kaveco. Kavecos and Pilots are the last that I think I have to go through. These are all of my Kavecos. I have clips on every one of them. The Burgundy, the Olive, this is a cult pens exclusive. It's like a semi-transparent speckled gold. Light blue, my son bought me. I got this white one recently um, because I love white pens and the Macchiato was my OG favorite. I say that I think I'm more Team Caveco over Team Twisby. A lot of people collect all the different colored Twisbys or the different colored Cavecos and I tend to lean towards the Cavecos, but I really want to find a Twisby that I love because I love the look and feel of them. Obviously you get so much more ink in a Twisby than you get in a Caveco. That, that's like one of the downsides to the sports is that they're small. I also have the brass and this one has like a silver toned finial so I got the silver clip for it and I love how that looks together I also have the Kaveco student which is one of my only other pens that has a metal section and it's fantastic this is such a great little writer this is also a Kaveco that I bought at Bob Slade same place that I got my Rocky Top Esterbrook this is a Perkio and this is a great little pen reminds me a lot of the Ferris Wheel Press Carousel Pen. I prefer this one. I like the Carousel. They're very similar looking. This is the Lady Rose. They're both about $20, $25. I just, I don't know. I just I just like the way my Kaveco's write better. I would really love to try the Ferris Wheel Press pen that like looks like a paintbrush. Um, this is a fun little don't worry about it pen. I love the Lady Rose color. So those are all of my Kavecos. I also have the dip pen, the Kakimori dip pen that I bought in Japan, which is essential for my collection because I'm swatching inks all the time. Okay, let's talk about Pilot. We're gonna go in order from like most affordable to the nicest. This is the Kakuno, fantastic. I have more respect for this Kakuno than I did when I did my collection six months ago. This is a fine nib. It's a great starter pen. I definitely have respect for the pens that I don't have to stress about, that I can throw in my bag and go, that I'm not worried I'm gonna lose or I'm gonna break. Kakuno fits the bill on that. I got it in a fine. I didn't realize, you know, how certain inks would work better than others. And I think I gave this not the best review, but I've come around on it and I really like it. Up next is the Pilot Prera. I think if you want to spend an extra 10 or $15 up from the Kakuno, the Prera is a great option. What this pen is famous for is the little snap sound. Everybody loves the snap, including me. It's also nice to have a fountain pen that snaps off like my Visconti Lava Pen. The Lamy 2000 also has that capping mechanism. It's nice to have a variety. I love variety, so that's why I have so many pens. The Prera is fantastic. They also have this like in a smoky blue. I'd love to try that. This is a great everyday carry, another great smaller pen. I would compare this more to the size of like a um, Sailor Pro Gear Slim. Very similar in size. Next up is the Pilot Metropolitan. Um, this is probably less expensive than the Prera. I should have shown this first. This is like a matte gold finish, very pretty. This is in my giveaway pile. It is a fantastic pen that I never reach for. I don't know, is it boring? It's a classic. The Metropolitan is a great entry-level pen, especially if you want a professional look. I think I'm gonna gift it to someone or sell it, but I'm not knocking it at all. It's fantastic, I just don't reach for it. All of my Pilot pens write beautifully. Pilot is just an amazing company. The E95S. I mentioned earlier that I love some extra fine nibs. I have an extra fine nib on my E95S. I absolutely love this pen. It's a total classic. It's pocket pen size, but when you post it, it becomes a full-size pen. It's one of the best bargains you're gonna get on a 14 karat gold nib. The nib is absolutely beautiful, how it's set in the pen. This is another one that I love to write in my Hobonichi Weeks because I have small space, great in on the Tomoe River paper. This is not the pen I reach for when I'm looking to do really fun, colorful titles or I'm testing my inks. This is a professional standby workhorse, won't let you down, classic style from Pilot. I love it. Next up is my Pilot Decimo. This is a new addition. I haven't really gotten to know this much. I haven't even hauled this yet because I got it in Japan and I still have videos to do from Japan. The Decimo and the Vanishing Point have the same nib unit. 
It's a very small nib. This is the, um, the Decimo is capless, as is the finishing point, and it has this click mechanism, which makes it a really functional, practical pen. This has the finer nib on it, and I think I have to mess with the ink. This just has the cartridge that it came with. It's got like that little pearl shimmer. I bought this in Japan. It was under $90, and I think these sell for like $140 in the States. I do not have my vanishing point with me because it's upstairs. I have the black matte vanishing point. I use that pen probably more than any other pen in my collection. I love the matte finish. I'm not typically drawn to this, like the chromey silver. There's something about that black matte. And I thought I saw somewhere on some advertisement, maybe it's coming in the future. It's like a evergreen matte vanishing point, like all green. It looks gorgeous. I don't know if I dreamt it. Let me know in the comments if that is something you've seen. My other, of course, probably my crown of all of my pilots is my custom 823. I have this in amber. Jay bought this for me in a medium nib last year in Japan. These are just so reliable. I watch Hemingway Jones. He always says like, once you get this, you really don't need any other pen because this checks all the boxes. It's a beautiful writer. It's got great ink capacity. This is a vacuum filler. It's reliable. It's good quality. It's going to last you a lifetime. I love, love my custom 823 and for the first time I put blue ink in here. I always had brown ink, of course. I think those are all of my pilots. I do wanna talk about my Navilar. I have like a couple one-offs. I got this at the Orlando Pen Show. I got the Nautilus. I love it in this dark green. I love the variation in the color. I love the feel of this pen and it writes beautifully and it's got that unique ink window that I think is just so classic to the brand. My first time trying this brand and I absolutely love, love this pen. I think I have gone over everything except my new vintage pen that I also got in Monson. This is a brand I have never heard of before. It's called Senator. It's a fine stub nib is what the guy who I bought it from, his name is Mike. He's fantastic. It's got an ink window. He wasn't even sure if it was ever inked up. I have Diamine Oxblood ink in here. What a fantastic writer this is. It really made me appreciate a stub nib on a finer tip pen. My Twisby has a wider nib stub or like my Lamy Joy or the stub that's on my Leonardo. They're all much wider at the top. This is fine, but it's it's got the, the stub feature. So I love this pen and this I'd never even heard of. I sat down at his table. I knew I wanted to get a vintage pen. I wrote with a bunch of different pens, Parker's, Schaefer's. This is what I landed on. Oh, I forgot a Leonardo. This is Dromgul's Leonardo. Jay bought this for me at the Orlando Pen Show. It is not a grande. It's a Momento Zero, but just to show you the size difference, this is Mount Olympus. I have this inked up with Three, Diamine's Three Kings, and oh my gosh, I love it. I, this has a lot of gold specs in it as well. I was worried I was gonna miss some pens that were over in my currently inked folder. I think I got everything. Pens that are on my radar right now, a Pelican M800. I'm going between the brown, black, and the like traditional blue or green with the gold hardware. Uh, let me know your thoughts. I keep wanting to get the brown one, but it's not in production anymore, so it's more expensive than I can get the blue or green. Should I just go for the traditional Pelican? Should I wait until a new release comes out? I really love the Tortoise, but that's like ridiculously expensive in the M M800 model. I would never pay that price for it. I just want to try an M800. I wrote with an M1000 at Apple Booms, and that was a dream, absolute dream. Should I splurge for the M1000 or should I go for the M800? That's on my radar. I'm also thinking about another Scribo, as I mentioned earlier. Right now, there's a sale at Gold Spot on the Monte Grappa Elmo in like this almost looks like sea, sea glass green. It's really beautiful. I think I might go for that because it's half off. Um, I looked at that when I was at the Fountain Pen Hospital. I don't own a Monte Grappa pen, so that is one that I really want to try. I don't own an Aurora either. So those are the things that are swirling around my head right now. As you can see, I need nothing, but those are pens I'm thinking about buying. Let me know what's on your radar. Let me know which one you think I should get, or if there's something I'm missing. What am I missing from this collection? I feel very blessed to have this collection. Um, and I'm looking right now, I did forget one. This is the Mayora 
alpha and I don't remember the um, the pattern on this. I got this second hand. I got it deeply discounted because it did not have the original nib, but I did bring this to Kirk Spear and he tuned this. It's a broad nib. It writes so beautiful. This is like such a beautiful fall pen. This is going to be in my currently inked for November. I think that's everything. I think that was the only one I forgot. All right, everybody, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you would like to follow along with my stationary journaling and of course my fountain pen journey. Um, it's so much fun. I love this hobby. It makes my heart happy. I will be back soon with another video and I probably will do a collection video every six months. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you very soon. Bye everybody.